to do. Let's just hop straight into the video. So here we're going to go into our settings and we're just going to start from the start at general. One of the main things here that I've changed is the enemy highlight color. I have it on purple or tritonopia as the colorblind mode that it is on just because this is easier for me to see in different smokes and just easier to see overall personally. I would definitely try this out and just see how that outline works because normally enemies are highlighted red but purple just works so well for some reason. It's definitely worth a shot. Now sensitivity aim, this is all preference. Just make it whatever sensitivity you're comfortable with. Play around with it. Figure out what sense you like to use. Scope sensitivity multiplier, I would leave this one because you don't want these two to be any different. When you're scoped, you want it to be the same sensitivity. That way you are moving at about the same speed and you know that muscle memory is going to be building correctly. Invert mouse, obviously off. And then cycle to next slash previous weapon wraps inventory. This is defaulted to off, but this is very useful to be on for a couple of reasons. First off, if this is off, you're not able to go from your knife to your pistol, but from the opposite way, if that makes sense. So let me try and explain this a little better to you all. If you have your knife out and you scroll down, at least for me, it's going to bring me to my main weapon. But if this is off, it is not going to bring me to my main weapon. It is actually going to bring me to nothing. It's going to leave it on the knife because it's not going to wrap through the inventory. So in order to combat this, to counteract this, you need to just turn this on and then you're able to scroll through your entire inventory with this setting. Next up, we have mini map and here you can rotate, keep player centered, change the size, zoom, and then turn on these vision cones. I'll let you guys see these settings. This makes it so that you can see the entire map on your screen at all times and it doesn't move around or anything. It's super useful just for being able to see where the action is going on and what exactly is happening. And then these vision cones also help a lot with being able to see what angles your teammates are watching. Show map region names, I have it on always. This doesn't really affect me much. You can turn it on by phase or never. That just kind of shows up on the side of your screen and you're just able to see where you are on the map. All of these, I remain off. A lot of these are pretty important to keep on. Blood helps you see where enemies are. Instability indicators, not a huge deal. Bullet tracer tracers are huge. So just, I would leave all of these personally on. Controls, I have all of the default movement options, all of the default equipment options, except for one thing. I have hold to aim down sights because personally, I think it is much, much better. For the operator zoom, I have it on toggle and then auto enter rescope. I have off right now. Um, another main thing that I have changed, use spike and use object, I both changed to F. That way when I'm planting the spike and stuff, I can just use F. With my abilities, I have my ability one on E, and then this here, the two and three, they aren't actually on slash and in. That's just what my two mouse buttons are bind to. So I have two buttons on the side of my mouse for my thumb rests, and I'm able to just click those for my two abilities. My ultimate stays on X. Communication options, I use left alt as my push to talk key. And then here in interface, we have everything on the default. So next up, we're going to head on over to the crosshair here. We have a white, very small, minimalistic crosshair look. Our outlines are on and the opacity is at 0.9. The thickness is at 1 and we have our center dot off. I do have fade crosshair with firing error on just because I like the way that it looks. And then for inner lines, I have the opacity at 1, the length at 5, the thickness at 1, and the offset on two. Movement and firing error, I keep both of those off and then I have no outer line settings on, everything is at zero. So if you like this crosshair look, go ahead, you can try that out. You can obviously change the color to whatever you do like. I know that a lot of people have different preferences. Personally, I just like how the white looks. Next up, we're gonna be talking about video settings. These are very, very important. So we're gonna start in general. All of this is kind of just based on what monitor, what computer you do have. I recommend playing in full screen though, so your computer can dedicate as many resources to it as possible. And then the main things here is your limit FPS. So right now I have my max FPS on 60 right now, just because 60 is what I do end up playing on. This is max FPS on battery though. This isn't actually what really matters. It's max FPS always maximum frame rate at any time. I just have this on 60 just because I play on a 60 hertz monitor and I have no reason to go up in frames at all. And then in menus, I just have it on 144 just because that's the default. It doesn't matter that much. If you play on 144 hertz monitor, I would change this to 144. If you play on a 240 hertz monitor, change this to 240 and so on. For graphics quality here, I have everything turned down to low and off except for improved clarity 
and shadows. I personally love the way that the game looks like this. It's way easier to see in a lot of different situations, and it's just a super useful thing to have those frames, and I never have to worry about my frames dropping. So these are the settings that I use to be able to have good looking gameplay, but also get those frames. And then for stats, I leave my client FPS and then my network round trip time on, just so that I can see my actual ping and my FPS that I'm getting at all times. They pop up over here in the corner. And then for audio, I didn't change much. I have my music volume down pretty low. And then for other, we have voice over volume, which is also down a good bit. Voice chat, I haven't changed many settings here except for the push to talk key. And then voice over, I haven't changed many of these, but I've thought about it. So let me know down in the comment section down below if you think we should be turning off these voice over volumes so that we don't hear these character callouts. I don't know, I haven't been that distracted by them, but I feel like they definitely could get distracting at some point. So let me know what you all think about that down in the comment section. I appreciate you all for watching this video. If you're not subscribed, hit that sub button. I upload daily Valorant content.